if you want to rewatch it, you can always go back to michaels.com slash classes. The video will be posted tomorrow. Um, and if you have any questions about today's class, I will be in the chat. So you'll, you'll be muted, but you can ask any questions you want in the chat and I'll be relaying those to Josh. Um, and I'm going to hand it over to him now. Cool. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Stacey. Okay. Well, welcome everybody to Drawing with Ink. Um, I'm excited. I think that I, the biggest thing I want to emphasize today is that we're just going to relax and have fun because first and foremost, anything art has to be fun or should be fun. So that's the goal. Oh, but I guess introduce myself a little bit. I'm Josh Talbot. So like Stacy said, I'm a designer at Michael's. I've been there five years today, today. So it's a big, big deal. Um, but I'm all, I'm an illustrator. I do a lot of drawings for them, but I do um, a lot of drawings for myself, uh, comics, cartoons, things like that. And so um, this month is October, is also Inktober. And it's a big, a big deal where people that like to draw with ink or want to learn how to draw with ink uh, during the month of October, try to do an ink drawing a day or at the very least one ink drawing in October or something. It's a, it's a good month for drawing with ink. And so there's a fitting time to do an ink class. So my plan was, is that we'll run through uh, some materials. I put a materials list on the class and if you don't have all of them, it's totally, totally fine. And we'll kind of look through some, some of the things that I've talked about using, and then we'll kind of do the same drawing, but we'll use different uh, tools along the way. So without uh, further ado, um, let's, let's look at some tools. So the first ones I want to show you are what's called pen and nib. And I think sometimes people, when they uh, think about inking, this is one of the first things they think of. And so what I've got, by the way, I've got this cool case. Look at this. It's a pop rocks container. You got to find cool like stuff to carry your art supplies. It's important. Um, and these are nibs. And so um, there's a few different kinds here. We can kind of I'm going to zoom up a little more. I don't know. See if you can see a difference. I don't want to mess with the setup I've got here. But some of these, let's see. Uh, that's, that's not, there we go. Some of them have like a little ball on the end. You can kind of see a little bit there. Or some of them are kind of a little bit sharper. Uh, man, that's hard. There we go. That's really hard to see, but anyways, and they do they do different things, and so um, the ones with the ball on the end are going to give you a little bit more um, even line width, whereas like kind of whereas these pointer ones you can get a little bit more of a um, some bare they give you a little a little more variance. And then there's some really good ones that are kind of a little bit in between. And that's what this one is here. But I uh, will probably get into that. So what I want to do is we'll get into that a little bit more when we start talking about pen and nib. So I've got pen and nib here. And then let's see. Oh, I, I also brought a toothbrush. Oh, can you see that? There we go. It's disgusting and gross because it's used for clean ink. So I think what we'll do is let's, I'll just, I'll introduce the materials for each section that we do. Um, so what I wanna start with is just some, uh, let's see, just some exercises of how, to, of, what, of how to use them. So this first one right here, it's a Hunt 101. And this is, I, you know, I've got so many things I want to show you guys. I'm like jumping, like I'm jumping into things so fast. Um, here, so I brought a huge stack of books. Hey, Stacy, do you want to switch the camera real fast? So I brought like a huge stack of books, um, and that that's something I would say, as as an artist, um, 
I can't get enough books or, or images. Uh, I had a teacher once tell me that you are downloading and you're uploading. And so reading books and stuff is downloading and then making drawings is uploading. And it's important to do both because uh, I feel like you can download all day long but not make any art. And then I guess if you're uploading all day long, I'm not sure what you're making art about. You need to have some, um, some, something to get excited about. And so that's what I brought these for is some books that get me the most excited. And this one um, is by a guy named Richard Thompson and he's passed away now. Uh, probably my favorite cartoonist ever. Um, and he passed away of Parkinson's uh, just a few years ago and it was super sad, um, but his work is amazing. And uh, he had this write up on, the reason why I bring it up is this was his nib that he used, the 101. And uh, he had this like write up in his book about his favorite nib. And it's a ton of words there. I'm not gonna read them all to you. But it was funny because he talked about, he said something like, um, basically he says, uh, a bad one can send me into a funk that poisons the whole household and probably scars my children permanently, but give me a good nib and I sing and dance and probably scar my children even more. Um, but anyways, it's just that, I thought that was really good because I feel like nib is probably the, the inking tool that I personally use the least because it's, um, it's either great or it's not and it takes a ton of practice to, to get really good at it. Um, but when you're good at it, I wanna show you some of the, some of his stuff. Like, and he's, uh, his, his line is so wobbly and loose and um, just all over the place. And that's, something, that's how I like to draw. Um, I like to draw things that are not perfect. Um, they're just crazy and, and messy. And, um, but there's like still so much control there. And so like, for example, um, I brought some drawings of my own. Um, this was the, the piece that was on the cover of the course. And this one was not, I, I, I'm jumping the gun a little bit because this was not done with a nib. This was done with a marker. Um, but I, I, and actually I did it with a Crayola marker of all things. And it was on a piece of carpet where it wasn't a flat surface. And so it gave me all this great line variance and like, you know, it's just scumbly and messy. And anyway, so today our goal is to loosen up so that we can be a little scumbly and wiggly and, and, uh, and not, not stress out too much because um, we can't really make any mistakes. So, um, but that was kind of the guy I wanted to show you. I have some books here kind of like, I tried to pick one that was most exemplary of the tool. And so it's, um, this was the guy I picked for, uh, for drawing with ink. I mean, I'll show you one more of his. Like, see how it's just, it's not perfect at all, but everything's just still in the right place. And it, um, just so light, like look at that dragon, the way that the lines are so wiggly, they come together. Or one more artist, one more artist I wanted to show you guys was Quentin Blake, who's probably like one of the, he, if you read the um, Roll Doll books, he did the cover and the illustrations for those. And he's probably the king of loose line work. Um, I don't know if there's anyone else that's as, as free flowing and crazy as he is. But you can look at that, how it's just so loose and, and, uh, and lively. And I, I, I watched a video of his talking about his process and his sketches are actually really tight. And then he, um, he purposely like, you know, covers them up so you can barely see his sketches so that he can like have space to um, be as loose as he wants. So let's get let's get back to to how to draw with the nib. Let's let's look at that. So what I've got here is I've got some Higgins Black Magic ink. You can buy that at Michaels. Most everything you see here you can buy at our store. And then I've got this great piece of foam pour. And what I did, I just cut a, uh, like an eye shape out of it. And I put my ink bottle in there and then my ink bottle won't tip over because, you know, it may be a black desk, but I don't want everything else in my house to be black. So um, just to keep things safe. Okay, I'm gonna carefully put that somewhere where I don't get ink everywhere. 
And so then I'm going to put it in. And so inside the nib, you see a hole there. It's a little reservoir that holds the ink. And so when we dip our nib, we want to dip it in and make sure it goes ink goes past that little hole so that it can fill up. And what we're going to do is we're going to do like some uh, some exercises, just like making lines. We're not at this point. I want to like just get a feel for what it feels like. So if you want to, oh man, again, I've, I'm so excited. I just jumped certain parts I wanted to explain. But this is my Bristol paper. I've got, it's a pad you can buy at Michael's, um, Strathmore brand. And I've, and so anyways, that's what we're using our, our Bristol for, is just for this exercise. So I just start with some lines and you'll see, again, they, they, they react differently um, with, a, with a nib. You wanna kind of baby it a little bit almost because if you push super hard, the opening of the end is going to open up and it and it, sometimes you want that but you can um if it opens up too much you're going to get almost like two lines um and so you can practice doing thick and thin test it out again this is the 101 it's actually not my favorite nib um but let's, let's at least finish this line of, of marks. And something too, when you, when you dip the pen in, dip it in and then you can um, hit the side a little bit to maybe knock off a little bit of excess. Hey, Josh. Um, yeah. Anne Marie asked if you could do a close up of you dipping the nib past the nib hole to fill up. If yeah. there's if you could just like hold it up to the camera maybe? For sure. Yeah, no, it, it is far away. So I'm glad you asked. So um, it's hard for me to make sure. Okay, so yeah, just kind of see this. Well, let's see, man, it's hard for me to judge where the camera is. There we go. Uh, roll it over so I can see. There, there's the hole. So I made sure it went past that hole. Do you see it? And the hole's hard to kind of, there we can see the hole. Does that make sense? Dipped it past that. And see how you can't even see the hole anymore? It's filled with ink. And then, and I, I don't know, I don't actually, I only said like knock off excess. You can kind of mix it with that. I sometimes don't because I want to have, I feel like I have more ink if I don't knock it off. Is that the answer to the question? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay. See, in this one, where you get the thick and the thin, it's like these are S's, you know, have thin on the top and thick in the middle. Um, so I want to switch nibs now. Um, I'm going to take that out. There's nib cleaner that you can use. Um, I sometimes use water. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I always try to keep it dry afterwards, but dip it in and I use my toothbrush and just knock off, try to get anything off of it. And then like, just like a old piece of jeans or something. Very careful, because you don't want to bend it. I mean, you have to be baby it. That's why I put it in the baggie inside that tin. I didn't want them rolling around in that tin because I don't want to get bent. Because um, those two little, it's, it's so blurry, I know it's hard to see, but there's just, there's two pieces of metal there. And if they get bent or askew, then it's kind of a goner. So um, kind of got to baby it. I wanted to show one more or two more, two more. Um, this next one, I've got three sizes. Um, I wish I, to be honest, guys, the names of all these nibs, I'm not the best at. This is a B5. I've got a B3 and a B1. I believe. And these are the ones that have that little ball on the end, if you can see that. And what they're, this is kind of like, you know, back in the day before we had like, you know, felt to, felt tip markers and things like that. If you wanted a unit line, this is kind of what you used. Um, I like using this a lot better because I feel like it, it, um, it's not as finicky as the, um, as that last nib we were using. 
Um, and you'll notice that one big difference too with this one, and I'll throw this on the camera too. It has two pieces of metal, whereas the first one, the first one, if you're looking at it, um, okay, I'll get a hang of this. Okay, if you're looking at it from the side, it's one piece of metal. Now check this one out. See how there's like two pieces of metal there? Uh, anyways, the way this one works is the ink's gonna get trapped between those two pieces of metal. Um, and that, that's what keeps the ink there. And that top part is that part of the little ball on the end. And so when I go to draw, oh, I need, let me do it again. When I go to draw, look at that. It's almost the same width all the way across. You can still play with it. And I, that's the thing I like about it is you can, there's still line variance uh, with the width. You know, if you push harder, softer, you can get a little bit of differentiation, but not a ton. And it just, to me, it, it's, uh, it's more reliable, I guess, to get the same result. Hey Josh, again, we have a again. couple questions. Yeah, yeah, please. So Anne-Marie asked if that, uh, when you see the hole again, do you re-dip or do you keep drawing until the line looks dry? I, I, um, the whole, you'll see the hole pretty on them automatically. So I just, I keep drawing until I run out of ink. Okay. And then Joni asked if the ink can be used on glass and if so, will it wash off? Oh boy. Um, there are so many different kinds of ink out there. Um, I think it just depends on the ink you use. Um, like even this one, like there's waterproof and like there's, I don't I, I can't answer that. It just depends on what it is. This one will not. I don't think this will work on glass. So, um, but you see, I get like, I feel like with this nib, I got way more, uh, what's the word? Uh, distance without, I, I still haven't filled it up. But you can see, I still can get thins and thicks. Yeah, I'm still going, okay. Yeah, so I, I feel like this, this is my favorite kind of nib to use. Are these ones with the ball in the end? Um, so what I wanted to let me show. I guess one more I wanted to show. And then I want to show you the drawing because that's the fun part. I want to do exercises, but I don't want to get too stuck up in exercises. Um, I want to do the the drawing too. But I feel like that's something to you know again something to be said for practice and. Um, you know, don't, not throwing exercise out the window. Um, and I think the first exercise for me, you hear about people that draw, they do a warm up drawing, um, kind of the importance of being loose, like you, you want to get warmed up. And so this is good to start this way. So this one's back to like one piece of metal, but it just, this is, and let's see. I, you know what, I don't know. I can't remember what I did buy was I went at our, our store, there's some speedball sets. And um, this I bought years ago. It was a, it's called a cartooning set, but they have other ones that are geared towards certain uh, projects. Um, and so it just came with a variety of nibs. So this one I wanted to show because it's, it's not as finicky as that first one, the Hunt 101. And you can get some of that line, that line with variance. Um, so I, I'd rank them if I could, and I, yeah, if I was ranking them, I'd say like, what, what I feel like easiest to use would be one, two, ah, ah, didn't get up in there. Not that we didn't know that, but there we go. Okay. But now I want to show you, uh, well, I guess while I've got it here, let's plot a drawing. So this is what I want to do. I've got a drawing over here of a mummy. I figure it's Halloween, you know, now's the time to do Halloween drawings. So I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll draw him with these different tools. And so I got him, this is why I talked about uh, coming with a drawing you want to draw or want to draw an ink. I've got him, he's drawing a pencil. He's just here on some um, printer paper. 
And then I've got another printer piece of printer paper I'm gonna put on top. Um, this is just like as average of printer paper as you can buy. But I will say, a, a definitely a plug for good materials. Um, there's better paper to use. Hammer mill um, photo cover paper is awesome. I, I, when I searched for things this class, I realized I didn't have any anymore, but it has a little bit smoother of a texture. That's why I said on the Bristol, I wanted you guys to bring smooth Bristol. Um, it, you'll, you'll know such a difference in what you use um, to, to draw. And the smoother the paper, the, the smoother the paper, the easier the ink goes down. I'll show you some other drawings I've got over here that use rough paper on purpose. But I think for my, for my experience, especially using a nib, smooth paper uh, makes life easier. So um, yeah, but we'll, we'll, we're gonna try to draw a little bit of this mummy uh, with the nib. So I'm gonna come in, I'm just gonna go down. Um, something to think about too when you're doing drawings like this. You're gonna wanna try to get your line width to be um, heavier on the bottom because I'm thinking about like weight and where the weight is. You know, something else too I'm noticing too, uh, bleed, that's the other thing with cheap paper. You're gonna get a ton of bleed. Um, and whereas with nicer paper, the ink's gonna stay on top. And that's, that's what you want. Um, and it all just depends on what you're using. Like later, I'll show you these ink markers that I have that don't bleed, but this is, this is bleeding a ton. Um, and I don't know if you can see that, that on there. So I'm gonna go back real fast. I'm watching our time. I wanna just do a little bit more with that other nib, that one that I said I like the best, just cause it works a little faster and we can do a little bit more of our money. See, look how thick that goes. Oof. But you can still get some line difference. And then you can come in, you know, we'll, we'll go crazy. You could go, you come in with like your, your thinner nib again. And you could do, you know, little lines. Can you guys see that? It's, it's so small. So yeah, you can see I'm talking about the bleeding that's going on. But then you can come in with like little line work, some hatching. You know, and, and that's something that you couldn't get with. Um, with that big fat uh, nib. So um, I wanna, so that's about, about it on, on using pen and nib. Um, I like it, it's just, uh, you know, even washing out these, these nibs, it's a little bit tedious. Um, there's other ways that are a little bit easier to use for me, but um, so that's that we'll, we'll kind of let these guys hang out for a second. And I wanted to show you guys my favorite thing to use for ink, just to make sure we have enough time for it. And that's brush. Let's see. Okay. So I've got some brush tools over here. Okay, so I think I mentioned you guys bringing a, a, a round watercolor brush. That's what this is. Um, this one I bought at our store, it's called Princeton Brush. And 
if you go look at the art supplies in Michael's, they have levels one, two, and three uh, that rank their, their quality. Um, and this is level three. So I try to get like the nicest brush we had. Um, and it's actually a number three uh, size round brush as well. But I wanted to get the nicest that we had uh, for this. Um, and then some of the other things I have here, these are both Pentel pocket brush pens. The tape is my own addition because I wanted to tell the difference between the two. This is probably my, my go-to inking tool because it's so easy. I don't have to dip it. All the, all the ink is charged in it. Um, there's no hassle. This is similar to that. Um, you can buy these. The ink is in it, but it's not as reliable as the Pentel brush pen. It can get messy and, and stuff. And then I just brought just um, a Sumi brush. There's tons of sizes and tons of, this is a whole art form unto itself um, using uh, Sumi ink and things. I have, I have a bottle of, of Sumi ink here. Um, it re, it, it's, you'll notice something you look for when you're looking for a, an inking brush is spring. So you want to be able to, uh, I'm trying to make it so you can see, uh, when you push the, uh, this is so hard. When you push the hairs, you want them to kind of bounce back, right? And that, whereas a sumi brush, it just works differently. You don't get that. It kind of stays where it is, which is just is a different style and it works a different way. But from where what I'm familiar with, this and these have more of that spring, which you'll find is super, super helpful. Um, I want to show you some more artwork I brought using um, a brush. So I mean, just, just some random things I pulled out, I've done. I did a few of these random um, cavemen people a while back. I don't know what I was, I, just, I was thinking about doing like cave people doing different sports. Um, but I just wanted to show like how it's, you know, you can just see like not being perfect with the lines and being loose and, and, uh, and if it's not perfect, it's okay. Um, yeah, I don't know, just like a random hip old lady. I don't know what this is, but um, I feel like the brush can give you so much more line variance and, and energy to things. Some random cowboy guy, I don't know. But and so much thick and thin, you can get so little and so thick with all, all one tool. Um, one book I brought that's probably like my top three of art books. Um, this one I bought at a used bookstore somewhere along the way. Um, it's, yeah, put me in a used bookstore, I could live there, like, it's the best ever. But this guy, Earl Tholander, uh, I've never seen any more of his work except for this, but he did these, all these barns and the, the, the work is so wonderful. It's just, I would, I would see it. Look how wiggly it is and all the spots and, and uh, he has a lot of washes in here. So he'll add water to the ink. Um, but I just love how loose it is. There's a, there's a drawing he has in here. Look at this, of like all the equipment from a barn. And look how he's just, I don't know, the shapes are so um, loose and it's not perfect. And he's just kind of okay with that. It all snaps together. So that's, that's the way I like to draw more is just kind of, um, yeah, being loose with things. So let's, Let's take a look at the brush. So I'm going to use. I'm going to start with um, with the Pentel pocket brush. Let's see how that works. Yeah, you can see. Okay, I'm just going to do some lines, and you'll see instantly if you're using um, brush. I'll do some with this, and I'll do some with the other ones too, because they they react almost identically. But I have to try really hard to keep it unit width. I mean, you get just a steady hand, and then. If you want to get crazy with it, it's so easy to just kind of give some variance. And that, that's just, I'm, the way I get that variance is just by changing the pressure that I give on the brush. And I'll, I'll, so I'll switch over to this, the dip one. 
you'll see it, it reacts very similarly. So, and I guess the, there's probably lots of, I know there's lots of writing and, and talk about how to hold the brush and how to think and, you know, um, trying to get the line to be smooth. And I'm not, I'm not the expert in that area, but I just know that I'm trying to just use clean sweeps and almost kind of like when you're, if you're doing a big drawing, you want to work from your elbow, less from your wrist. Um, I feel like that'd probably be the same, the same uh, advice to give here. Hey Josh, what's the name of that brush you're using right there? Good question. It's um, Princeton Brush is the brand. Um, Aqua Elite. I don't know. There's there's two words on here. I don't know. It's it's a uh, Aqua Elite Princeton Brush Round, and it's number three size. Um, and it's I, I believe this is a brand unique to Michaels, and um, it's the level three in terms of quality. So that's as much information as I know. Thank that you. Um, the there's a Windsor Windsor Newton is a brand out there that makes really good stuff. Um, they have a Series Seven. Um, I, if you like Google best inking brush, that comes up a lot. I do not have one of those. Um, it'd be good to invest in. And I'm talking investing like that. That one brush alone costs twenty dollars, but it can last for twenty years, right? Or and I think too, just having my experience. I, I've had a tough time. Anyone that knew me in art school or any time else, I'm such a tightwad, and I don't spend money very easily. But um, I, with art supplies, I can't talk enough about um, buying quality supplies because the experience is so much better. And I think sometimes people buy lesser quality supplies and then have a tough experience and they blame themselves saying, oh, I'm not an artist, I can't draw well. And it was because whatever they were using wasn't very good. Um, so I feel like it's worth it to put in a little bit more money up front um, to get some quality materials. So I'm just kind of experimenting here with thick and thin. Um, and again, you can see too, I, I feel like I got a lot of um, distance with that ink. It's not running out very fast at all. Um, here and this in, in real time, I want to jump back to the Pentel brush pocket pen. You can see it's very similar. And it's so cool when you can drag an edge and you just, I don't know, you guys can't really see it in there, but just get really crazy with the texture. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, that's what, that's what, that's why brush is so wonderful because you can't really get that very easily with the, uh, with a nib. <laughs> uh, nib's not meant to do that. Um, but you can just be so loose with it. So, um, yeah, let's jump over to our, our, let's jump back over here to this. And I'm putting it on there. It, it's probably not 100% dry, but it's not, I don't think it's gonna be a big issue to do that. Um, but yeah, and so I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna just do his leg. And I'm, again, I'm kind of like varying it. I'm purposely not being slick with it. Hey, Josh. Um, yeah. While you're doing that, uh, Perlita asked if you had any tips for what to do if the ink is dry. In the, in, like using a brush? Like, yeah, like if your ink, like either in your, I think you're wet, like your ink well is dry, if there's anything you could do for that or. Yeah, I'm so glad you asked. And it's perfect timing you did. That was a perfect question because I've got two pens here and this one's actually running out a little bit. They last a long time, but they don't last forever. And um, what do you do if it gets dry? Um, you do a little dance and do a really good drawing because I, for me, like I'm not a jazz musician, but I've been told in jazz music they call it the blue note, and it's when you just have like this, everything you play just is beautiful, and and everything you you just use almost like there's all this energy inside of you, and you have to use it before it runs out because once it runs out, you'll be back to your normal self. I feel like there's this sweet spot 
when, it, when, when the brush gets dry, whether it be like the dip brush or this brush, when it's like, oh, it's not too dry yet, but it's getting there. And, uh, and anyway, so what, what, what do you do when it gets dry? I'd say draw a bunch or, or save it. Like I've got these, I'll put the lid on it. And I'm like, okay, that brush is at its perfect stage. I'm saving it for a good drying or something like that. Um, does that answer the question? Kind of, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that was perfect. Was and then I also have a question. Can you use this kind of ink brush on a canvas? Yes. Um, I'm assuming so. A watercolor brush is what it's labeled as. So if you, I know you can do watercolor on a canvas. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing like oil with it or something. I mean, that's, that's important to remember is not to mix your mediums. Like don't put oil products with, with um, water products. But um, yeah, I think you can use it on a canvas. No, no big deal. It's very, it's very fragile. It's like a, it's, um, it draws little lines. So if you're doing a little canvas with little lines, it's perfect. Um, but you can see here, I uh, draw it in and like on the bottom of the foot, see like how I kind of left some white spots in there. I try to draw the lines going in the direction of the foot and leave some white in there. So it feels like a shadow, but it's not. Um, I, I feel like those directional lines kind of give some sense of the form. And then again, we can kind of come back in and we could do some little hatching in here of the wraps. See, and again, like trying to not make them perfect. I feel like that just gives the drawing so much life and it uses the pressure. And I feel like sometimes when I'm drawing I'll draw like uh, several marks, get, you know, get maybe a whole leg into the drawing and be like, oh, this isn't working out well. Oh no. But like you just press on, right? And then it kind of all snaps together at the end. And, and that part that didn't feel like it was working out well is great because you had, you had to kind of do your, uh, you kind of had to get through the, the rough spot, I guess, get comfortable. That's why we did the warm ups. Um, and kind of like what Quentin Blake said, where he doesn't, I can see my sketch back there. I don't know how much you guys can see it. It's there. I think you can see less of it than I can. I can see a little bit more. But being okay with that, because then it allows me some space to, to um, design it. I find for me, if the, if, for me, if the uh, drawing is too, you know, if, if, if I'm using tracing paper or a lighting table, which sometimes I will for certain things. But in this instance, if I could see those lines that I've drawn before so crystal clear, it almost gives me stress because I'm like, oh no, I've got to follow that drawing. I got to make it look like what I drew before. And, and, uh, and I kind of like it where I can kind of, I'm like, I know I did something there before, but I don't need to see exactly. So I want to, let's see, I'm gonna try to decide if I wanna do something with that semi brush before we get too far down the road. Sorry. So I went in there and I'm seeing how like, if like the lines here are, you know, it's great that there's this big thick line on the bottom of the legs, because I think it gives some weight there. We're not getting a thick line up here. I think I wanna add one on the back Something to remember when you're doing thicks and thins is to think about where the lighting is coming from. I'm assuming it's probably coming from above here. And so I'm gonna put a thick line wherever the shadow would be. And then something else I was told was that vertical lines are always gonna be a little darker than horizontal lines because the light's gonna be coming down. And so um, it's gonna be hitting the horizontal planes. So these are gonna be lighter, whereas it's, uh, anything vertical is almost automatically going to be slightly in shadow because it's not getting as direct of light. So I'm just going to scumble in a, a rough line. I love it. Again, look, look how imperfect that, that line was. Just lob it in there, you know. It's, it's the best. 
And then let's see, I'm not sure how dry my brush is. Let's, let's try this other one because we can, obviously we can purposely get this one dry. So let's go over here and get it to where it's like, oh, I washed it out, dang, it's okay. And here I am, I probably should probably be doing this over here. It's okay, thank goodness for Photoshop, right? You can take it and like cut stuff out digitally if you don't want people to see this on the side. But look, so I'm getting some like rough parts there and then I'm just gonna kind of try to get ah, some of that in here. And it's not perfect. I'm like experimenting in and that's okay. But some of it looks really cool. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? It kind of jams together. I mean, maybe it's a little dark in places I didn't want to, but just add more. It's fine, whatever. And it's a mummy for gosh sake. So it's gonna be rough and gross anyways, right? So yeah, I think that's just, that's that's the thing. I'm more and more, the more and more I draw, I just, uh, I ease up. I need it easier on myself. Cause if I, if I'm too tight, too, too, um, Tight and I'll never draw. I'll get too I'll get too too worried about it and won't draw anything. And what a shame would that be, right? So um, be easy on yourself. And something else someone told me that I really loved was you got like a thousand or ten thousand bad drawings and bad drawings inside of you before you even get to the good ones. So start drawing now. Get those thousand bad drawings out because you got to somehow. So there's no no time like the present. Start drawing. So that's that's drawing with those things. So let's let's say you know like I'm looking at our time. We're we are running low on time a little bit. Still more cool things I want to show you. And uh, so we got to go for the fastest tool there is in the inking world, easiest one, and that is markers. And I feel like markers is where you can kind of go crazy in terms of buying all sorts of fun stuff and. There's, I mean, there's a million options out there. Um, I'm not very good. I need to watch the chat. I'm still thinking here. Okay, please show the completed mummy. I can do that. That's where. That's why we're moving to the markers. We can do this. So I've got a few here I want to show you. Um, this is a set I bought. I think I mentioned this on the chat. I mean, on the, on the, um, the materials I asked you guys to get. Um, so this is a set I bought this had just a few different ones to try. And actually I didn't buy this. A shout out, my friend Christine gave this to me and uh, it's been an awesome set to have. So you can't really see them very well from there, but uh, there's a way to show you this. Okay, these mean different things. I can't even tell you what they mean. These two are, let's see, a, this is a brush, the SB and the B is a brush too. Um, I think one of these is like a chisel tip. This is like a, like a normal felt tip marker. Oh, this is so backwards. There we go. And what's this other one? Oh, this is the chisel tip one. So SC, uh, chisel tip. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, so that's what these are. Love them. Fun to use. And I also said bring a micron. Uh, that's kind of like you almost call it a technical pen. Um, and I think I said eight was the one to bring on the, the tools just because it's the thickest one. And I like it because again, I can play around a little bit more with it. When it gets really thin, um, this is a one. This is for doing very tedious type drawings. Let's do a little bit, let's do a little bit. Oh, what's our time? We're doing fine. Let's do a little bit. Let's play around with these markers a little bit. Bob Ross, let's play around with this, you know, go crazy. But look, can you see that? Ah, can't really see it. So tiny. I, it's it's not the way I want to draw. Here, let me draw. Let me at least draw a line somewhere so you can see. And this this one actually I think is actually running out a little bit. So let's let's give you a fair shot. Let's give this number one micron a fair shot. Where's number three? I want to find the one that's closest to it. Okay, so you can see it's like. I guess you can definitely see that a little bit easier there, but still, so tiny, so tiny. Um, but the thing about these that are nice is that it's unit of width, so it's not gonna, it purposely doesn't have a lot of line variance or, or weight, you know, variance, except for when you get to the eight, then you can kind of, you can, you can still press on it and get some kind of craziness with it. Um, but it's like a marker. And then uh, 
these, I want to show you these. So this is the one, this is the normal like felt tip marker. Obviously very, you can go thin to thick, really easy. Um, this one, so they have two brushes here. One of them mimics, um, the SB one mimics a real brush better than there's the B one. Um, it feels a little more like a marker, but you can get a ton of thick to thin with this. It's so, so wonderful. Um, this is the SB one and then this is the B one. And it, it's just, I think that the thick to thin is less. There's less variance there. Still nice though, still nice. And a favorite Castell, these are, that's what brand these ones are. Um, but yeah, so super, super cool. So I think on the mummy, I really want to use, oh, and I also, I brought the Crayola marker because I think I showed you earlier that sun that I do with the marker. Um, but yeah, you don't have to be fancy, right? Like Crayola is great. I think sometimes we think of Crayola being like just for kids or something, but you can get such variants too with Crayola markers. I love drawing with Crayola markers. Isn't that awesome? Whew. It's perfect. And the, the nice thing is I feel like there's like not, because it's Crayola, there's like this feeling like I can, I can uh, do whatever, like it, it doesn't feel like I'm wasting some expensive material that's a Crayola marker. So real fast, probably my, if I said the other was my number one favorite book, this one I found in college in the library. Um, and I went and bought it online because it's so good. It's called Drawing with Markers. And, um, and there's so much here, but just, some of the things you can do, this is using both sides of the paper. So it bleeds through and then he like turns it over and um, draws more. Um, there's a drawing up front. Where's his one right here? So all those, all those tools. I just want to show you this in terms of things that had to be perfect. Well, here, here's a good one. Look at this bottle. He, drew, he draws it with um, different kinds of line and different kinds of markers. And look how loose that is. Isn't that beautiful? And um, so anyways, I just feel like markers are the most versatile. I mean, you, well, no, brush, you know, it's all versatile, whatever, but it's just, markers are a ton of fun because I feel like there's less pressure to, anyways, we want to finish our mummy. Let's quit looking at that. So let's start with the SB one. Okay. I'm in, yep. Yeah. Do a thick line in there because I want to do like the bottom of the arm. Now look at how I do the hands. See, look, look, it's like, I mean, you see that it can jog so much and that's okay. It's, it, it all snaps together. It's okay. And it's just, it, the way to do that is just to, to um, you know, instead of drawing like this, you, should, you kind of just wiggle your hand a little bit and uh, just don't be perfect with it. While you're doing that, we uh, have a question. Um, would you be able to use gel pens with something like this? Uh, yeah, I, I haven't. I feel like my experience with gel pens um, has been more like uh, coloring, like a, a black line work, kind of almost like coloring book type thing, uh, putting the color into things. Um, you totally could. I don't think gel pens get you near the, the line width variance that you can get from a brush um, or from, you know, from different, these kind of markers. Um, and then yeah. we just had a question, what pen were you using right there? Which of the pens? That was the, that was the Faber-Castell Soft brush, that's what, that's what SB stands for. Soft brush pen. Um, I'm glad you asked. Yep. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep using it actually. So, see I just get so thick right there.
And I, I have to say, I was when I picked this drawing, that's the thing too that I want to emphasize for this class is having a sketchbook. Because when I had the opportunity to do an ink class, and I was like, oh man, what am I going to draw? I just went to my sketches I already had and I found a mummy I'd already drawn. So I feel like there's something to be said for, for keeping a sketchbook because you never know when you need a, a mummy to just pull out and say, hey, look, there's a mummy. Um, but I, I guess I mentioned that to say, there's no face on him. And I thought of that when I was going to draw him, I thought, oh, we probably want to see a face on something. So I thought about like, here we're going, we're going rogue here. I like want to like stick a face of some sort on it. And see, like when I'm filling in this, this mouth, um, again, I'm not trying to fill in every spot. I feel like leaving some white in there makes it feel like there's a shape in there, like wrappings or something. So not being perfect is perfect. Let me try to hint there's still wrappings on there somehow. And this would be a perfect place to use a different tool to get some shadows in there, just kind of see what's going on. So find that. Then let's get, let me pick a different tool. So now I switch to just the, the what do they call it? Just the normal brush is labeled black 199. So it's the one that's not quite as um, soft. And I can kind of you have a little bit more control here. Ooh, don't want to take that so wet. I have to say too, I'm using a different part of my brain to talk and draw the same time. Like, how, oh, where's the thumb go? Oh, so that's okay. Oh, no, I think that's the, oh, well, it's okay. I thought about bringing some white deleter fluid, but I didn't. Anyways, so here we are so far. I want to do some more of those lines. So let's get, let me go back to the pencil brush pen. And come in here, especially here with the eyes and stuff. I wanted to get indicate some shadows. So we're like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, yeah, build those shadows like that brow kind of goes in. And I'm totally noticing I did that hand backwards. <laughs> we're not gonna hide that. That looks really bad, but that's that's something too. I've, a friend of mine uh, is, I've been an illustrator for a long time and he has um, old illustrations all, all over his studio. And um, to look at like, I guess the quote unquote mistakes that they've, that, these grates made where they'll you know cut out a piece of paper and paste it over and repaint a leg or an arm or whatever like no shame there right like that's part of it so that's totally cool let's see now it's on purpose thanks Becca. it's true no um I guess if anyone has any like question, like not question or yeah, questions for sure, or comments about ways that they use ink, like if there's anything different from what I'm doing, like please share it because I'd, I'd love to learn more. But I'm just going back in, just kind of trying to get the amounts of details around those wrappings. OK. 
Can I use any code three pens too? Yes, yes. Um, the sets, like at Michael's, when you buy the nibs, there'll be sets that are labeled as calligraphy sets. Um, and they're still good to use too. Um, I feel like, like any tool, you kind of just have to like play with it for a while and figure out like what's the, what's its, what's its song? <laughs> what does it, what can it, what can it do and how can I use it? So I'd, I'd play around with it, but I'm guaranteed that you can find some cool things to do with calligraphy pens. Do you store pens vertically or horizontally? Uh, horizontally, well, both. I have, I have um, a pencil pouch like this that I store them in, um, but I have also like a, a carousel or whatever on my desk that I have them in too. So I don't think it matters. Brushes, brushes, if, you're, if you have a brush, it's best to have it dry, where to go? Dry down like this if you can, so the water doesn't get all in the ferrule and, and make the, the uh, hairs split out. So try to like, when you, when you get like this one, I rinsed out as good as I can. I'm gonna have to rinse it out more after the, right after this, but um, then try to shape it again and let it dry. Same with like the sumi brush, that's what I try to do there too is, watch, shape it. Let it dry. But yeah, pet markers. That, no, doesn't matter. Well, I'm glad we got the brush out because I want to end. We're getting close. I know we're getting close to the time. Anything else? Um, I'll fold them in a nice paper before he stores them. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, yeah, I think it's like that's, I mean, especially with nice materials. You know, if you're spending 20 bucks on a brush or something, um, baby the thing to death, right? Um, so the, the nicer, you, nicer you can be with your materials, the nicer they will stay. So I'm just gonna try to get this to be dry again and see if we get some more of that cool texture. We'll fix it later, I promise, but not now. I don't want to do too much to mess up the line work. I think it's cool too when you can have like a base that's like mainly the almost you know ninety percent of my line work is all black, but then if you go back in with like this gray and just hits little places, I think it adds a lot of depth and texture. Got some compliments. Ma uh, Maria uh, says that this was a great class and she says, thank you. Oh, thanks so much, Maria. That's great. Yeah, I had a ton of fun too. I, yeah, you, there we are too. But- um, And Nick yeah. asks if you have an Instagram account. Oh, I do. Yeah, Josh Chava Art is my Instagram. So you can look it up. I'm gonna put this on there. Um, and so you can you can look it up there. I, I Yeah, so I do. I, I wish I posted more. I need to be better about posting, but I do have an Instagram account. Um, yeah, any other questions anyone else has? No, we got uh, some thank you, some pretty cool. Well done, Josh. Love the info. Everyone really loved the class. Um, and I just wanted to thank everyone who came to the class today. Uh, again, this class is being recorded. So if you want to uh, watch the class again, uh, if you need to relook at that mummy, if you want to draw it later, um, it will be available at michaels.com slash classes tomorrow and on our Michaels YouTube channel. Um, other than that, thank you, Josh, for joining us and, and teaching us all those fun things about ink. And uh, we will uh, go ahead and end the class if you're ready. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, you guys, for coming. All right. Thank you, everyone. We'll okay. Bye. Bye-bye.